Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to this act of worship of morning prayer. Today, as we observe the feast of St. John Chrysostom. St. John Chrysostom was the bishop of our church, and we give thanks to him for his work and witness. He was the one known as the Golden Mouth because his sermons were so eloquent, and he brought so many people to God. Our service continues with the opening sentence for saints. We give thanks to the Father who has made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. The Venite on page 36. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let, let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let, let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in sadness. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, and, and to, to the Son, and, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. In a moment of silence, we bring our personal transgressions before Almighty God. Now together let us confess our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The psalm appointed for today's service is Psalm 34, verses 15 through to 22, which can be found on page 509 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 34, verses 15 through 22. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson from Jeremiah chapter 4, chapter 1, verses 4 to 10. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, reading from verse 4 to 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Here ends the reading. The Benedictus, page 40. Blessed are you, Lord the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have, you have raised up for us a mighty Savior, Savior born, born of the house of your servant David. David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And you sit for the second lesson. A reading from the Gospel of Christ according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Jesus said, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be a time for you to bear testimony. Settle it therefore in your minds not to mediate, meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Song of the Redeemed on page 53. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because you are just 
and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Some words from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the first chapter, the tenth verse. See, I have set you this day over the nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build, and to plant. I have set you this day over the nations and over kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build, and to plant. In the first chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah, we encounter what we refer to in biblical scholarship as the call of the prophet. Most of what we refer to as the 7th and 8th century prophets were those who were not affiliated with any institution in Israel or Judah, and therefore to validate their prophetic work, they always had a call experience. For example, one may recall Isaiah. Isaiah is sitting in the temple and he sees the angels and the cherubim and the seraphim and he hears a voice. Who will go for us and whom shall I send? He said, Here I am, Lord, send me. Jeremiah has a similar call. And Jeremiah's call, God tells him, I knew you from the time you were in the valley. I shaped you and I ordained you so that you become a prophet to the nations. And so Jeremiah's call is one that sets out what his role in his society will be. And it's not an easy call. For he is called not only to preach good news, but he is also called to chastise the people. To pull up and to root out and to tear down, also to plant and to build. And that will set him at odds with the authorities. And so Jeremiah becomes the first of the Old Testament prophets, who shows that following the way of God does not necessarily mean that everything will be rosy. Following the way of God does not mean that everything will go your way. In fact, Jeremiah was one who was persecuted throughout his prophetic work. So much so that he complained to God, you, you seduced me. You called me to do this work for you. But every time I go out and speak, they laugh at me. People beat me. They want to kill me. At one point in time, he was even thrown into a cist, left to die. Had it not been for the eunuch who went there and saved him, Jeremiah would have died in that cistern. But all of that happened because of the call that he received, that he could not remain quiet. He said, you know, when I preach your word, they chastise me. But if I keep it inside, it's like something burning in me and I have to get it out. And it's a very powerful message for us who are called to preach, especially today as we reflect on the feast of St. John Chrysostom. John Chrysostom is known as the greatest and most eloquent preacher in the history of the church. In fact, we hear these names and we say John Chrysostom. Chrysostom was not his surname. Chrysostom was a title that he was given. And it means the one with the golden mouth. The one who speaks so eloquently. We're told that people flock from everywhere to hear him speak. But one of the things about Chrysostom is that like Jeremiah, his message was also to tear down and to build up. He could not remain quiet about atrocities taking place around him. So when he became the Patriarch of Constantinople in the year 397 AD, it set him at odds with the temporal leaders. We are told that Empress Eudoxia thought that he called her Jezebel, and so she banished him not once but twice from his seat. 
and in his 10 years as patriarch, what is equivalent in the Eastern Orthodox Church to Pope in the Western Church, he faced many challenges from without and within. From outside, as I said, the Empress Eudoxia thought that he called her Jezebel and she sought to persecute him. And so he was banished from his seat. But within also, he also faced criticism from his priests and his bishops because he led an ascetic life, because he led the life somewhat of a recluse. They, they criticized him for that. And Chrysostom wrote one of the most profound texts in Christian history, the six books of the priesthood, outlining what the priest should be like. And one of the things he was very, very heavy on is that every priest must be able to preach. Every priest must take preaching seriously. Because he said, if you do not take preaching seriously, if, you, if you're not preaching to your people, you are leaving them out there like ships being tossed in a storm. You're not equipping them with the things that will keep them grounded. And so he criticized priests and bishops from time to time. In fact, one time he said, the road to hell is paved with the bones of priests and monks and the skulls of bishops are the lampposts leading people to hell. That is how powerful his message was and how serious he was about this call to preach to his people. And so we are told, as I said, many flocked to hear him because he never took it lightly, the opportunity that was given to instruct his people and guide them in the good news of God's salvation. Not looking to himself, but looking beyond himself. Similar to what St. Paul would have said. If I preach the gospel, it gives me no grounds for boasting. In fact, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Because as he felt, an obligation is laid upon me to preach the gospel. Chrysostom embodied this. An obligation was laid upon him. And he never, ever stopped, no matter what happened, no matter how many times he would have been exiled, no matter the persecution he would have faced, he recognized that the great duty that was placed upon him to instruct his people in the good news of God's salvation. Jeremiah felt this as well. Jeremiah, in spite of all the persecution, in spite of all the mocking, he had the word of God upon him and as God had pointed out to him in his call, before you were formed in the belly, I knew you. Before you came out of the womb, I ordained you. And I sanctified you so that you'll be a prophet to the nations. This was Jeremiah's call and he lived it to the end. Chrysostom was similar. John never let go of the call that God gave him. And he pursued his ministry to the end. In fact, he died in exile. He died during one of those periods of banishment. But he never stopped preaching and teaching his people. And he outlined what the ideal of the priesthood should be. And I wish to quote that for you. St. John Chrysostom said in his six books on the priesthood, he said, the priest must be dignified, but not haughty, awe-inspiring, but kind, affable in his authority, impartial, but courteous, humble, but not servile, strong, but gentle. He saw the priesthood as one of those roles that it still has the opportunity to fulfill in the community. I always remember some years ago, I think it was back in 2014, the bishop who came to lead us in our clergy retreat said something. He said, you know, the priesthood is the last institution in every society that people really trust, that people will allow into their homes. You know, you go, I go around visiting the sick and carrying out my pastoral care. And people welcome you into their homes as though you are part of them. And it's a very good feeling to think that 
people have that kind of trust. It is incumbent upon us, as Chrysostom would have taught his priests, not to betray that trust. Not to betray that trust by taking for granted the, the place that people have placed us in in their lives. Not taking for granted the obligation that has been laid upon us and the, the opportunity we have to transform the lives of individuals, but even more so to transform the society in which we live. Empress Eudoxia realized that. That is why she had a problem with Chrysostom, because his messages cut to the heart. His messages were able to transform people in the society. And that always has a problem with some civil leaders. We encountered it in the book of Amos. When Amos went preaching in Israel, we're told that the priest at Bethel, Amaziah, went to the king and said, look, you need to get rid of this man. Amos has prophesied against you and his words are too heavy for the land. The land cannot bear his words. What he meant is that people are being converted. He is, being, he is convincing people about what is happening. Chrysostom was doing the same thing. His eloquence and his fearless messages, his willingness to speak truth to power, had begun to resonate amongst his audience and it troubled the civil authorities. Jeremiah was similar. Jeremiah's words were beginning to touch the people and to transform their minds. And we're told that Zedekiah had him placed, dropped into a cistern because you cannot have that kind of message resonated within the society. But what human history has taught us over and over, you may get rid of the messenger, but you can never kill the message. John Chrysostom died centuries ago, the year 407, on the Feast of Holy Cross, September 14. But in the year 2021, we still remember him. We still remember his words. We still remember his teaching. We still remember the eloquence of his preaching. We still remember his admonition to us as priests and leaders within the community that we must take seriously the opportunity that has been given to us to instruct God's people to preach God's word and never ever take it for granted. For if we do that, how can our people hear of the love of God? As the hymn writer said in the hymn we sang not long ago, Tidings sent to every creature, millions yet have never heard. How can they hear without a preacher? Lord Almighty, give thy word. And later on we will sing, Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. O seek me, Lord, that I may seek thine erring children, lost and lone. That was the call of Jeremiah. That was the call of John Chrysostom. That is the call for us all, whom God has given the opportunity to come into his kingdom, whom he has equipped with varied gifts. All he asks us to do is to use the gifts to the best of our ability so that the word of God may reach to the ends of the earth and this world may know the knowledge of God and it may be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Let us remember today John Chrysostom, the golden mouth, the one who was eloquent, but the one who was fearless in his preaching. And remember that as we go into our world to proclaim this gospel, the message given to Jeremiah, the message that John Chrysostom felt is still a message to us. He has called us to tear down and to root up but also to plant and to build up. The two sides are necessary and the gospel is there to guide us so that we may bring persons to Christ as John Chrysostom gathered so many around him through our words and our teaching. We can gather people around us so that they can become more aware of the presence of God in their lives but also become agents of his light and this truth 
in the world. I pray that God will guide us all and that the words of John Chrysostom may continue to inspire this world for centuries to come. Amen. The Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Suffrages, Form C, on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. O God, you gave to your servant John Chrysostom grace eloquently to proclaim your righteousness in the great congregation and fearlessly to bear reproach for the honor of your name. Mercifully grant to all bishops and pastors such excellence in preaching and faithfulness in ministering your word that your people may be partakers with them of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night, and for the gift of a new day, with its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we may again give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Prayer of Dedication on page 47. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive, by the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout the all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
the hymn 528.
Now to God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit you this day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, this day and forevermore. Amen. Now do have a blessed and safe day, everyone. Thank you, Barbara.